Hi folks, just doing a quick unboxing and look at the Wiley Fox. I haven't done, done this once already, uh, just to get everything set up and ready to go. Um, this little phone is £89. Uh, I got it direct from Wiley Fox on their website. Um, I got it because my S5 here is playing up. Um, doesn't mind doing that, but then you try and turn it on or off. And you hold the button in and you can't get nothing going on. It doesn't like to turn on very often. Um, it's my old phone. It's my old contract phone. Um, yeah, I've replaced it earlier with an S7 Edge, but I'd like to use my second phone, where I live, because I suffer from very poor signal on there. I'm with to have a little second phone with a little page to go SIM card in. Um, it's not the end of the world for me. You know, SIM cards are quite cheap to buy or free most of the time, so it doesn't matter if you have to. Um, I don't know to buy one of those, but I thought I'd buy a little Wiley Fox Spark um, just to tie me over, to keep me going. Um, so, once you undo the spark, or well, undo the box, this is what you get a little bit of plastic cover over the top. The phone itself, it's a nice design. I have left the screen picture on this at the minute from the box. Um, I don't want to scratch the screen up to shit without getting a proper screen protector. The rear, the logo I really do like. It's a very neat little logo. Um, the back isn't rubberized, but it does have a very nice grip onto it. I mean, you can hear it there. That's why I put much pressure on. It's literally like grippy, so you won't drop it. Um, turn on. Little vibration. Logos. And I'll leave that to boot. In the actual box, plastic. Stop everything beating around. At the bottom, you get a micro USB charging cable. Battery bag, quick start guide, and warranties. And that's all you get. You don't get a charger because obviously this phone's £89. And they're trying to cut costs out where possible. In this face, most of us have. God knows how many micro USB chargers or wall warts for the micro USBs. If you're like me, you've probably got them built into your plug with plugs at home. So we'll just put this away and wait for this one to load. It does take a little while to boot up. Um, I'll see if only one gig around and a fairly mediocre processor for today's smartphones. But it does load up eventually. Also, I've already gone through all the processors set on my Google accounts and the Cygen account. Um, it's actually my first time using Cygen. I've never used it before. I'm a bit of a. Um, well. I'm not a novice, but I'm you know I'm an Android user, but I'm not a definitely not a power Android user. I tend to leave things quite stock all the time. Again, you can see the boot up time. It's not great. Also, the screen on this is actually fairly good, fairly clear, crisp, colours are good. Brightness is great. Um, there we go, load it up. So if we compare size wise, it's fairly similar size to the S5. Um, there we go. One thing I did notice with this another another review online was the um, slider wasn't working properly at the time they used it. Um, I found that this had the same the same problem. But what I did was, I literally just pressed somewhere, and it started to work. And after I pressed it once, it would then dim and brighten correctly. But also being so engine, there is a nice little feature, where if you literally just run your finger on the top, it dims the screen as well. And run it back, and it should, should brighten back up. 
There we go. Brought it back up. Um, obviously this doesn't have a lot of processing power. I mean, if we lo load either. You can see the CPU. It does have the odd start here or there. No, not display. CPU. Probably you can see my Samsung user I've um, already changed around. There we go. Oh, it's not responding. I changed around the, the back and the buttons. There we go. So, MediaTek. Four cores. Fairly large manufacturing process, I guess, no? Um, yeah, and not a great deal of, like, speed on it. Well, only 1.3. But well, you know, that's not the end of the world for a £90 phone. The display is great. It's only 720p, but very, very crisp. Um, you know, not got an issue with the screen at all. Also, being a Cyan engine, it does have the Cyan engine loader. So you just scroll through like that, it's quite handy. Um, press it again, get rid of it. Um, you will find that this takes a while to load some games. I mean, Pokemon Go, let's go for that. It's not a very intensive game, but everyone's playing it. Mm. Oh, that was already preloaded in memory. <laughs> Sorry. Let's get rid of that one. Bet you this will load before this one does. Definitely not a powerhouse. Haven't tried N22, but from what I've seen online, it does get around about 32,000. I'm not sure what the S5 gets, but I don't think it's um, anywhere close to my S7 Edge, but it's definitely better than 32,000. I think my S7 Edge scored around, obviously, this is the Exynos of Metal, scored around 129,000. So this is roughly four times as powerful as that. But then it is, what, ten times the price. So, yeah, not a bad little phone. It's going to do what I need it to do. Quite happy with it. Also, just to mention, Wally Fox. Ordered this Monday at about two or three in the afternoon. It arrived the next day by 10am. That is pretty damn good customer service and delivery. You know, I can't complain about that at all. Um, yeah, I would say if you guys need a cheap little phone, you're not worried about all the feature sets you get on the latest flagship models, but just want a phone that works and you can still play a few little games on, it's not bad. You know, there is the odd starter here and there, but if you're just doing games and sending texts and just talk on the phone, the odd little bit of web browsing, um, you know, it's not not too bad. You know, I've quite happily web browsed on this, just reading online forums relating to my football club. So yeah, not bad at all.